My name is Martin from Prince Potty. We're going to show you how to install a new porous pad assembly or a waste ink pad on an Epsom XP425. These instructions cover a myriad of other printer models ranging from the SX200 series all the way through to the XP445+. Okay, this is a very common design has been reused again and again and again and again. So it'll cover a hell of a lot of printers. Now, Printer Potty, we have a number of different products. I'm not gonna deal with them right now. We're just gonna deal with the actual replacement of the pad holder with the pads inside. I'll quickly go over our options regarding that in a minute. But for the moment, XP425, here's what you do to change the pads. Turn the printer around. There is a screw located just here. Okay, so you remove that screw and put it somewhere safe. Once you've removed the screw, you can then turn the printer onto its front. This is the pad holder right here, this unit here. You then slide it to the right like this. You can then get your finger under that, grab and pull the unit out to display the uh, waste pads in the original pad holder, okay? Once you've removed that, you can then replace the pad holder with your new unit. Pop it in slightly to the right, as you did before. Push in and then push everything that way. Okay, so you then push it that way to put the pad holder back in. And while we're here, we can now screw that screw back in like so. So that is the basic process for replacing the pads in your XP425. Now, as you can see here, this particular unit has um, one, two, three, four, five, six pads and they have a, a void in the center. And if you actually knock these out a bit further, you will find there are, um, there are gaps going from this side to this side to uh, <laughs> help the ink um, distribute. Okay, that's one pad, vari uh, pad, hold uh, pad holder variation. Then you have this one, which consists of much thicker, one, two, three, four pads units and you see there's a little bit of a void there there are no gaps in between this it's a solid unit um, basically they do exactly the same job they don't do anything really differently this one will mean that the ink will splash a tiny bit more back up into where the pad holder uh, sits so if I turn this around I'll just show you quickly um, so this is the area where the ink will um, splash around, uh, basically come out. And with this one, obviously the ink will go down and jet in and it'll batter around a little bit there, but it will still come back up. It really isn't a big deal. Hits this, it'll spatter around at the top. But as you can see here, there's this basically creates a seal around it. It's not gonna come leaking out all over your floor. Not unless you completely messed up, okay? So different pad configurations all exactly the same pad holder design. You can buy the original part complete with the plastic holder or you can buy our LX1 printer pad set from Printer Potty which comes with full instructions including this video and everything is provided on a nice nice simple layout like this. Take out your existing pads like this and then you build your new block. You go one, two, three, four, and like that. And you get a block of pads like this, which you then slot 
directly into your pad holder. Now, depending on our manufacturer and any changes in, in material, you might get them come in this configuration or in this configuration. As long as they all fit, you're fine. All they are is basically a nappy in your printer. And then once you've done that, you then just install it as we showed you earlier, straight back into the printer and you're good to go. Okay. You've seen approach one. This is approach number two. If your printer is an EcoTank model or has a, what's known as a continuous ink system attached to the printer, you don't want to be doing all of this because the ink in the tubes um, and basically where the reservoir is and everything else, you might start knocking ink over. You might have the ink going back and forth in the tubes because of the changes in pressure. So messing about with a printer and turning it onto its front is probably not a great move. Okay, so we're gonna show you a method for replacing the pads on a printer like this with a continuous ink system or similar where you do not have to lift it at all. Instead, what you're going to be doing is turning it around like this, seeing this area down here without the printer ever being tipped. We also don't want to have it to fall. So like that, it's gonna fall really easily if we just leave it like that. So just push it back a little bit there. What we do, create some space there. I have two reams of paper, doesn't matter what brand, but two heavy reams of paper. I'm gonna put them on top, on the edge, on the corner that is staying over the desk, like this. These two reams of paper are staying on and they're acting as a counterbalance so that I can now move the printer to where I need it, like that, okay? The printer is not going to fall over all that easily. Alternatively, if you've got somebody else there who's available to help you, you can get them to just basically lean on the printer from over there and then just hold it down, okay? So now that I've got it there, I can do exactly the same thing as I did earlier. You are removing that screw from the printer from that that holds the pad in position as before. Put it somewhere safe with the screwdriver. Then we are getting hold of this pad unit here and we are dragging it over to the right and allowing it, I need to draw it that further, drop it out like that. Okay, so it's come out as before. You then get your replacement pad holder or your pad holder with the pads replaced and you then reverse the process, push it up, slide it over to the left, and then you replace your screw as before. And that's it. Pad holder has now been replaced. I'm gonna move this back onto the desk a bit further before I remove my counterweight and then I can turn it around with the continuous ink system laid out next to it. Now, thinking about this logically, if you have a continuous ink system, chances are it will have been installed over on this side. So what you may end up having to do is take your continuous ink system, your reservoirs, clamp the tubes, yeah? Clamp the tubes so that there's no ink flowing back or forth using the little roller and then sitting the reservoir on top of the printer while you work, okay? But remember, it will be acting as a counterweight to everything else. Alternatively, just put your, your ink bottles or your reservoir over here out of the way and push them forward. Whatever you do, you have to figure a way to secure everything so everything doesn't go tipping off and causing all kinds of problems. If you're really worried, my advice would be uninstall your continuous ink system before you do this and just do it by tipping it up on the on its front. That'll be far more effective than trying to uh, do it with everything attached. You, you might end up in a lot of bother, okay? Get somebody to help you if you're at all worried and things, but this then gives you access, like I said before, to that. But be careful, because if you do this and it's like rocking like this, 
yeah, this, your counterweight is absolutely vital. Okay, and paper's the simplest thing to get hold of. So, so that is how to fit a replacement pad and pad holder into an XP425 and any other number of printers that have the same design. The only other thing you then need to do is reset your waste ink counter to fix the printer. Right, thanks for watching the video. Please give us a thumbs up and share to let people know about this particular product and also about the solution. We would love to see more printers being able to keep running instead of them going into a waste uh, landfill purely because their pads are soiled, that's insane. Okay, so we'd much rather help you guys keep your printers working. So I hope it's been useful. Like I said, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and um, please share.